Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. This is uh, Math 1111, 9 o'clock Zoom meeting. And we'll just start working some problems in section 2.3. And I guess we'll start with problem nine. And they give you a graph, and the idea is to see if you can read the information off the graph. And so, take just a second so I can try to sketch these things. The F graph is red, and it starts at down negative two and left negative four. goes through negative three and negative one. Crosses at negative two and up one. And curves on to zero, three. And curves down to two and two. and then finishes over four and down one. Something like that. The G curve is blue and starts at about two and a half, left four and two and a half. Or below this peak. Goes through negative three and up two. Oh boy, so maybe this was up a little further and then negative three and up two, so it's dropping. And it hits this cross at negative two and up one. Crosses right about here. One, two, and up three, okay. Over one and up one, curls back. Crosses right here and finishes over three and up four. That's the G curve and the other curve is the F curve. On the, in the book, it's colored. Uh, let's use this one. Okay, let's see if I wind, we wind our way through A, B, C, D, and E. So A, which is larger F of zero or G of zero. Okay, well, the X in each case is zero. That'll be the Y axis. And you can see F of zero is three. G of zero is about a half. So clearly F of zero larger, or F of zero is greater than G of zero. Again, you're comparing the Y values, and the higher one is the larger one, has the bigger Y value. B, which is larger, F of negative three or G of negative three? Well, if you read each of these off the graph at negative three, your G is clearly larger, it's above F. Looks like G is two and your F is at uh, negative one. G of negative three is larger. 
All right, part C. Or which values x is f of x equal to q equal g of x. Where are they equal? They are equal where they cross or intersect. They cross. So they cross here and they want the x values. Which values of x? They cross here. That would be at x equal negative 2. And they cross here at x equals 2. Those are the values where f of x equals the g of x. They're both 2. I mean, they're both equal. Uh, at this, they're both 1, and here, they're both 2. The x values where that happens are at x equals negative 2 and 2. All right, part D. Values of x where f of x is less than or equal to g of x, this would mean below. f is below g of x, f of x. What x values is the f below g, less than g? It's very similar to this. What's larger, the larger one's above the other one, or the smaller one's below the other one. So worded less than, this would mean f of x below g of x. All right, well, the f is this curve, so clearly it's below at this x, negative 4, to here. And you got a less than or equal to, and that's at negative 2. So it starts at, here's our answer, up. starting at negative 4, comma, negative 2, and you'd have brackets because you are equal to but then the f goes greater than g. It's above it, all the way over to here. Right down, all the way over to here. So that this is off. Your f is greater than g. f greater than g here. f less than g here in this region. Less than g. And uh, your f, again, your f is over here, and your f is less than g here. So that starts at positive 2 and looks like g runs out at 3. 2 to 3. And I'm going to have one more part that I didn't uh, get to. So part E, find Values of x, where f of x greater than g of x. So the f is above g. This will use parentheses. No or equal to. Well, the f is above g. I guess we pointed that out. Your f is greater than g in this middle region, starting at negative 2 to positive 2. But nor equal to, so we don't include negative 2 or 2. Answer, negative 2, comma 2, but with parentheses, there's no or equal to, because right at the 2s, you're equal. And there's no or equal to here. So that's what this said. Uh, f of x equal to g of x, where they cross at negative 2 and 2. The f is greater than g between negative 2 and 2. But again, with no or equal to, it's parentheses. You really got to, this very technical, you really got to watch these things. All right, let's see. Why don't we try one like problem 15? 
problem 15. So the f of x minus 1, negative 3 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 3. Again, when they give you this condition, they're telling you x min and x max. So, the graph x squared minus 1. And if you go to window, they're giving us the x min and x max. Well, close it to that, negative 3, 2, 3. Didn't tell us the y, so we'll leave that alone. Graph. Looks like we are getting an upward opening parabola. Crosses the y-axis down at negative 1. Part A, the graph. All right, domain, part B, domain. Well, it just flat out gave it to us. Negative three, three. And again, I'm using brackets. There are or equal to's here. Range, this was given. Yeah, it's that easy. All right. Well, for x equal negative 3, y equals negative 3 squared subtract 1, that'll come up 8. Remember plugging negative numbers into squares or positive, even powers. You should come up positive with that piece. I don't know how to get rid of uh, notifications of Facebook. Oh, it went away. Great. Oh, we have a participant. Welcome. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, sir, I can. I'm sorry I'm late. I was writing a paper. No, no, no problem at all. Let me, uh, I'm just about finished with this problem, and then I'll uh, go to you and ask if you want, got anything you want to see. I'm just, I'm doing uh, page 215, problem uh, 15. That's uh, fine. Okay. Thank you. Okay, sure thing. So for x equals 3, our y value is 3 squared, subtract 1. Notice I really don't have to be careful about the negative with parentheses, or positive yeah, with parentheses here. Also get 8. That's what the graph says. So you get the same number on both ends. Making my range, remember it's y min, y max. So if you look at the graph, the minimum y is a negative 1. We'll have a bracket because you, you do go through negative 1. That's when x is 0. 0 squared minus 1 is negative 1. And it will go up to 8. And it does that on either end. So that is the range on this one. OK, is there any um, problems you, any problems you got a question about or having trouble with? Um, actually, there was a problem. I'm looking for it right now. Okay. Give me sure one second. Is it out of the book or on WebAssign? It's out of the book. Um, I think it was on page, also page 215. Okay. It was similar to that one you just did. All right. I don't quite remember. I lost it somewhere. I have a whole mess. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. Is it um, number nine? I, I can try to be, you think if you saw it, you'd recognize it? Yeah, you can do one of those. That's fine. Um, I just, I mainly struggle with like the graph stuff. Like that's hard for me. Okay. And I try. Now, is it actually graphing a formula like they're asking you to do down here or is it reading stuff off of a graph? I want to say both. I'm not very good with graphs and stuff like that. 
Okay. Well, I just worked problem nine. Um, I can walk you through, I can back up a few pages and walk you through uh, what I did, if that would help. That'll be fun. Okay. Oh, we've got a second participant. Very good. I, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't have, um, can't see your names on the screen. So she, uh, she wants number nine and I just worked it. So I was going to walk her through what I did. And then if you've got any questions about any problems, we'll be happy to work one for you. Okay, thank you. This is Allison Bauer. Ah, Miss Bauer, very good. Thank you. Okay, yes. Uh, I didn't write the page number down. We're on page two fifteen, section two three. Okay, the book has this color coded, which probably makes it easier. I don't have my colored pens, but if you look at it, the two graphs. Tried to as accurately as I could copy them. But the F, as you can see, is kind of this uh, red, is, I'm sorry, I'm not showing number 10. Number nine, here we are. Okay, number nine, the F is the red curve here, and then this G is this kind of open up blue curve. So I did my best, so I don't mark all over my book, to um, copy it here. So the first question they ask is, which is larger, the F of zero or the G of zero? So these are, they're asking about the Y values. And basically the, lar the larger one's gonna be above the other one. So if you look at X is zero, they're giving you the X value right here in between the parentheses, that's your X. So in both cases, X is zero. You go to the F curve. They didn't you ask for the numbers, they just asked which is larger and you see how the F curve is above the G curve, which makes it larger. That's really all they asked. I did go ahead and fill in the numbers. At X is zero, your F is three and your G doesn't really say, but we can probably take it to be a half. It's halfway up to the first box, making the F of zero larger than the G of zero. Does that help? It, yes. It, yeah, it kind of does. Okay. They, uh, say, part B asks the same question, just uh, switches the X to negative three. So come back to negative three, and you can see, see the F is coming down here. This is F. Your G is, they label it over here, but it's following this through, and your G is above F. And you could write the numbers down. They didn't really ask you to. That makes the G at negative three larger than the F. Because it's above. If you want to compare the numbers, yeah, I wrote them down. The G of negative three is up at two. The F of negative three is down at negative one, although it doesn't look that way on my graph. Actually, it's down at negative two. I wrote that down wrong. That actually should be a negative two. Yeah, negative two here and then positive two for the G, making the G larger. Can we go on to part C? Yes, please. All right, that's supposed to be even easier. Can you tell when the F is equal to G, that's where they cross or intersect. You're getting the same value out of both. They want the X values where that happens. So at, they cross twice. This X is at negative two. That X is at positive two. So that's the two X values where they're equal, where they cross. Does that help? It does. Okay, cross at negative two and two. That's where they're equal. All right, try to squeeze part D on. You want your F less than G. Well, it's kind of the reverse question to this. You're larger if you're above, one's above the other, that makes it larger. So you're less than one's below the other. 
So if you look at this, you're, you're looking where your F is below G. You want your F graph below G. So back up at the curve, your F is below G here. That's where I wrote this here. And then the X numbers go from negative four to negative two. So well, that's where I wrote this first interval between negative four and negative two. Notice the or equal to, that's why I'm using brackets. That notation comes up everywhere. So I'm just pointing it out. All right. Well, then F goes above G. So F is greater than G. That's what I'm saying here. The F is greater than G. That's why at zero, your F of zero was greater than your larger than your F than your G right here at the Y axis. But it's larger from the intersection there to there. Right, then your F switches back below G, starting at two and going on to just three. That's where G quits. So your second interval is between two and three, again with brackets, because it's an equal to. Questions about that? Not for me. Okay. So then I believe in E, they switch it, and they want the F greater than E strictly greater your f strictly greater than g notice no or equal to so now you you want your f above g again you're going to use parentheses with no or equal to and that's where i was showing you in the middle that's going to be between your intersection points this is where they're equal and now your f is greater than g between them your f is above g So that goes, in, it's going to be between two and three, I'm sorry, two and two, negative, I'm sorry, negative two and two, if I wrote that, yes, negative two and two, but with parentheses, there's no or equal to. Because right at negative two and two, it's equal. Didn't ask for that here. This gets very tricky and technical. Questions about that? No. Okay. All right. So Ms. Bauer joined us. Did you have a question, Ms. Bauer? Or a question about any problems? Did you want to see any problems? Um, I'm really here for just the additional visualization of all of 2.3 and 2.4. Okay. So whatever you want to show me. I don't have any specific questions. I think I'm comfortable on most of it, but this is just for my extra. Well, I don't know if you want to, I did work problem 15, which is further down the page, and it was to graph x squared minus one. I can just walk through it. It'll help. And they gave you this condition on it. So that means they're giving you the X min and X max, which is your domain. And okay. Or equal twos, that signals brackets. See, they could have left off an or equal two and I'd have stuck a parentheses if they had. So okay. they could do any of the four cases. They could put or equal twos in both. They could leave or equal two off here or off here, or they could leave it off in both cases. And that would switch whether you use brackets or parentheses. You would punch it in straight on the calculator. Your calculator can't really distinguish between the or equal to or not. So you'd still punch negative three and three, whether they have an or equal to or not for the graph. On your X min and X max, you would still, yeah, I still got it. Whether they use an or equal to or not, I'm still gonna punch negative three or three. Okay. So when you have a window, I say, well, that's the window. So then the graph is an open up kind of parabola crossing the y-axis at negative one. All right, now to get the range, that's where things get tricky. The domain is super simple. They just flat out gave it to you. You've got to plug each of the two x values at each end into the formula and figure out the y numbers and they come out the same. 
If I plug negative three in x squared minus one, I get negative three squared. Hope you remember about plugging negative numbers into even powers. You should come out with a positive nine. When you do that, subtract one, you get eight. And you get the same thing with three squared. That's nine, subtract one is eight. Now you gotta look at the graph, see the eights on both ends. That's the biggest number. This one curls around, starts at eight there and curls around to eight. The minimum y you go through is down here at negative one. So your actual range is gonna go from negative one to eight. And again, with brackets, cause you've got these or equal twos on the x's. Questions about that? Uh, that's straightforward to me. Okay. I'm good. Good, okay. Well, did you want anything more from 2-3 or want to see a few examples out of 2-4? I'd love to see 2.4 if possible. I don't know about my friend here. Sure. I'm good with anything. Okay, well, I hope that uh, you think 2-4 is pretty easy. It's intended to be. Uh, I had someone uh, want a little help looking ahead for next week. And when we hit two, we're going to jump to two, six and two, seven next week. And I think you're going to find them a lot tougher. They're, they're going to get a little nastier. Yeah. <laughs> Coming attractions. So enjoy Yay. a neat section while you got it here. We'll take it. Okay. Now do, uh, again, seven and nine, they give you a graph. I only really ask for just this first little pro column here. So seven and nine, they ask again for net change, which is the top of the slope formula, and then average rate of change, which is the full slope formula. And you can do seven and nine just reading points off the graph. And then you got to do 11 to 22 by plugging the X values into the formulas to get your Y value, et cetera. You having any trouble with any of that? Is there anything in particular? Well, I guess we just did, we did ask for 23, which is at the top of the what, section. What okay. does the, okay, so the dotted line, what is that supposed to represent? The, the dashed line here? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's to represent that when you do a slope, which is your average rate of change, and notice the, 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 line, the, the red curve is not a straight line. But when I pick two points off of it and do the slope or average rate of change between those two points, I'm getting the slope of the straight line between those points. They're just trying to show that. Did that make any sense? I could write any of that down. It, it helped a tad. Not very much, but it helped. <laughs> so here, but with what I pick this point and this point, I'm getting the slope of that dashed line in part B. So it's basically showing where, where it curves, I guess? No, it, it's just showing the rate of, well, I need to keep the average rate. How the hell can I say it other than average rate of change? Uh, so why, Y1 minus Y or Y2 minus Y1 over X? whatever that, that formula is. So the formula we used on Monday? Yeah. Okay, okay. That's, okay. A, run. Rise over, that's a rise over a run and that's what it's right. showing us. Rise correct? over a run, yeah. And that, that is your average rate of change in the fund. It doesn't make any sense to really use average rate of change here. I guess they're just trying to get you used to the terminology. It makes much more sense to use it in word problems where I just, we're not gonna do any, but um, for example, um, 31, I just point one out. They, they're giving you a year and then the population they measured for a small coastal community. All right. So when they do it, they want an average rate of change between 1998 and 2001. That's, there's your two X values. Okay, your Y values, go, you'd have to go 1591, subtract 856, and you divide that by three, which is 2001 minus 1998 is 
three. You want me to show you that? That would be 1591. I don't know if this helps or not. It would be 1591. Maybe I should write it down. Minus what was 1956. And you're dividing that by three years. 245. So in other words, the population increased by 245 people per year. That was the average rate of change. That was the between 1998 and 2001. Okay, that makes so much more sense now. Okay. Yeah, back on the other graphs, so they just do generic numbers off a of simple graph. Yeah, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But yeah, this this is one where it maybe makes more sense. You, you can see what I did. Between 2001 and 1998, that's my X2, my X1, 2001. My X2, my X1, and then my Y2 and Y1. So when I subtract Y2 minus Y1, I get 730. That made my net change. It changed by 735. And then when you divide by the difference of the years, you get your average change, 245 people per year. But I, I'm discovering online, I don't want to say this too much because we're being recorded. I've really had to shorten up what we teach because the, these online Zoom videos get so much shorter since you're recording them and you got to upload them and everything. So I, I don't want to say it too loudly that we're doing a little less material than in a normal class. But uh, yeah, in a normal class, I would have done all these word problems. You, you can see how much longer things would be if I did. Right. Okay. So don't thank me all at once. It, it overwhelms me. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking that's really awesome. Okay. No, no, please. You're, I didn't say it out loud, but we, yes, we, can, yes. we can throw confetti, though. I, okay, so yeah, I, I stopped the section here just because it's supposed to get the point across. Even if it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, exactly the average rate of change. Did anybody have any trouble plugging numbers into any of these formulas here? That's really what it is. It's it's an exercise in plugging these are X numbers, even if they call them T's or Z's. And you get the Y values by plugging them into the formulas. Do you have any trouble plugging numbers into formulas? No. Not really. No. I'm pretty good at that. Pretty good. Okay. Well, we're at 30 minutes. Does anybody want to see any others then? Can you just give us maybe a challenging one in 2.4? Just something that you think that we need to know for the test from 2.4? Just maybe one of the more challenging questions. Well, the really questions are this net change and average change. Um, you want me to do an even, uh, would an even one be challenging enough, like 18? Yes, you know, that would be great. Well, do you want me to walk through it or do y'all want to try it? Um, maybe we could try it first and then see what happens. All right, well, sure thing. I'll pull my pad off. This is page 224, section 2.4. But I, unfortunately, I don't have it in front of me. I don't have a, a textbook. Oh, okay. Well, I'll write the problem down. It's uh, Thank you. 18, sure enough. Yeah, it's G of T. T to the fourth, subtract T to the third, and add T squared. T is negative 2, T equals 2. Here. Part A is net change, and Part B, I'll give you plenty of room to work that, and Part B is average rate of change, and net change is Y2 minus Y1. Average rate of change is that same thing, but divided by the difference of the X's, which creates the average. I'm going to pull my pad off the camera, and I'll work it. And when you all are done, let me know, and I'll put it back on. We'll see if we get the same thing. Okay. 
Oh, can you leave the problem up by chance? Oh. All right, sure thing. Let me. Uh, I haven't writing it down yet. Yeah, let me pull a piece of scratch paper off. Then. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Okay, I'm finished. Whenever y'all get ready, I'll put my uh, answer up and we'll see if we get the same thing. This really is a good exercise in seeing if you know how to plug the negative numbers. That's really the trick. Do you know how to plug the negative numbers into all these powers and come out with the right thing? Most people don't have too much trouble with the positive number. But if you can do the negative number, come out with the correct thing, you're uh, well on your way to uh, doing well. So when it says y2 minus y1, we're solving for x here in g2, right? Or no. Not really solving for anything here. It, it, you're, you can take the t equal negative two is like being your x one. When you plug that into this, you get your y one. Got you. Okay. And the, I would take t equal two to be the x two. Plugging that in, I get the y two. Okay. The trick to it is getting correct numbers for that y2 and y1. You get the correct numbers, you know, you get the right answer. If you mess it up, you of course don't, unfortunately. Okay.
Okay, I'm ready. Okay. You want to tell me what you got for the net change? I was hoping you wouldn't ask me that. Oh, okay. Or I can put mine. Well, up. I got I got sixteen. Okay, that's good. It, is that correct? Well, I take either sixteen or negative sixteen. I did it as negative sixteen. Okay, but why would you take it as? Oh, I see. Okay, yes. Well, yeah. There's there's no real correct x2 or x1 so if you did it reverse from me that would have reversed this and given you a positive 16. i take either answer is fine okay great now the average rate of change should have a correct sign no matter how you did this you should have got negative four yes that's what i got too but you got 16 on top, your bottom should have come out a negative four. Yes, it did. But so is the average rate of change then um, 16 over negative four, and then that would make it um, just negative four, or do you have to leave it as a fraction? No, it, it, since it can be reduced, it needs to be reduced. Okay. If it had been like 16 over five, you'd have left it. Okay. Okay, sounds like y'all um, did our other student present have any questions about this? Yes, I'm yeah, good. I'm good. Good, okay. Did you uh, want to see anything else then? No, this was helpful for me. Okay. I think I'm good. I think you answered my questions earlier. All right. Well, very right, good. We'll, we'll keep the same Zoom schedule next week. And uh, yeah, work on the next two sections. Okay, so. well, thank you so much, Mr. C. All right, absolutely. Have a good evening. Same to Have you. Have a good one. Thank you. Uh-huh. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye.